All right, so it's a Friday night, and I have nothing better to do. I have no wife, no kids I know of, no friends and no life, so that's a great time to do some more monitor repairs. So I was sent these two K7000s. I have not opened them up yet. I just opened it up and read the note here. <clears throat> so it says, first K7, so I'm sorry, first K7000 keeps turning off intermittently, has remote board. Second K7000 has horizontal width that was too narrow, so they replaced a cap behind the flyback with a different value, but it has vertical fold that they can't figure out. And there's no remote board, but I've got one, so that's no big deal. The vertical fold's probably uh, the 5060 hertz pot. That's, hopefully it's a quick and easy fix. However, um, I'm not using the same tube that, that this person has, so it may not have fold over at all. But if it does, we'll adjust the 5060 hertz pot, and that way we'll know at least that that's the issue, and he can uh, take care of that when he gets these back, uh, fine-tuning it, if you will. Uh, both of them have new caps, flybacks, and power cap. I guess that's filter cap. Uh, whatever mods were there, he did not do. I <coughs> uh, also made a tube ground adapter for me to use. A, I use connectors so I can swap in multiple games if needed. Okay, uh, well, let's take these out and give them a good look here. Um, Okay, there's the first one. Here is the second one. <clears throat> All right. Set that aside. Along with this. And I guess we'll, they're both, this one here has his uh, address on it, so I'm not going to show that one. So I guess we'll start with this one, just to, I don't know which one is which here. Um, he doesn't have, doesn't say which one's which on the boxes, so let's just start with this one. <coughs> yeah, that's nice, kind of cool. Neat, all right. Okey-dokey. Any broken pots? Nope. We'll set them all to center preemptively here. Something that I like to always do, just so we get a good baseline of color. Oops, sorry. I just put them all to center there. I mean, as you can see, they're all pretty much straight and even. I like to start with there for a good baseline. All right. Let's take this out of here. I'm always hesitant to work on chassis that other people have already worked on because I don't know. It makes my job a lot more difficult sometimes trying to do rework. But it's not always the case. Alright, put this aside. And here we are. Looks very clean. Damn it, something stuck me, and I'll be damned if it's not... Hmm. Something got me in the finger, and I don't... Like a splinter of some kind. It's annoying, that's all. Okay, so... Yeah, caps have definitely been all replaced. Um, I'm not sure what's up with these... Someone put 50 volt 470 instead of 35 volt 470, and they're rather tall, but not too big of a deal. Uh, yeah, visually, looks pretty good. Clean. Good job. Well, we got uh, R97's kind of burned up here. Yeah, this is uh, rather toasty. It's also, I don't even know if that's the right rating. That looks way wrong. Um, I don't have a 7000 here at the moment to look at other than the one, the other one in the other box, but I think that's not the right resistor, but we'll still measure it to make sure it's good. Um, fuse is dirty. We can take this out, clean up the ends, but I just go like this and then put it back in. Okay, this is obviously the one that doesn't have the remote board because they're all the 
pots are on the edge there. And P538 is definitely 25 inch. Uh, this was the one that had, uh, what was wrong with the, okay. This is the one that, no remote board. So this is the one that had the width too narrow uh, and fold over. Okay, so. That being said, let's turn it around. Looks like this resistor has been replaced. And they changed the C... They got the C36 mod complete that I've talked about in other videos where it gets rid of the four post critical safety cap, C36, and puts the two leg in there. I don't see the jumpers though. Oh, they're on the bottom side. They're on the bottom side. Um, looks like... Uh, that's a normal, It's you think that that should be on the other side, but that's actually a normal mod for this side of the board. Because if you look at this side of the board, there's no stamp, or there's no uh, location for that diode in there. You can see it doesn't have a, it's got the legs for it, there's a hole there and a hole there, but there's no um, silk screen on the board for that diode. So it gets put on the bottom side. Don't ask me why. It's one of the idiosyncrasies of this particular one. Um, <coughs> Also, what's odd is that this is the early version of 7000. This is the 19. This is the 1986 version, and I'll bet you I know that the. I bet you I know the solution to this problem already. 1986 version. There's a 1990 release and a 1986 release. The 86 release has a factory mod, and puts a, a big capacitor across the posts here. Uh, you'll notice D18 is actually on the bottom side of the board. D18 is supposed to be right here. Right there is where D18 is supposed to be. Someone took it out and put it on the other side of the board. Now, uh, on this 86 version of the chassis, there's normally a big capacitor. I believe it's across, um, let's see, C38 is that one. I believe it's across the same location here as D18. I'll have to grab one that has the mod, but I'll bet you dollars to donuts that that cap missing from here is the is the reason for his width problem uh, but it said too narrow I believe that that said so I'll see if I can get that figured out uh, we'll share in that knowledge together this looks like one big massive what the hell's going on here type of thing it looks like that whole area of the board it didn't burn up but somebody removed the traces somebody has gone through here and actually physically ground away the traces, no pun intended, ground away the traces and they just put these jumpers here and it's one big solder pad of solder which I guess would work for functionality wise so there's really not much else I can do with this. There's nothing here to repair because their traces are gone. Uh, it doesn't look like there's really much else that needs done on the bottom side here except for the mystery of the missing cap and why D18's on this side of the board and not the other. I think what I'll probably do is put, uh, well, D18, yeah you can see, you can I can see here the legs of where it used to be and they got clipped off because it's actually supposed to be across this post and this post. This one here and this one here is where D18 normally is and on the other side you can actually see the clipped off leads in there from where it was. Someone clipped it off on the front side and straightened the legs out and soldered it on the back side. So I may put that back the way that it's supposed to be. Um, it's still across the same two terminals. There's, You can see it's this one in here, so it's still this same solder pad, This our trace here, and this trace is still the same thing. So I can put it back on the other side the way it's supposed to be. But I'll see if I can't find another one of these that are the 86, the 86 version. Um, and we'll uh, look at that and compare against this one. But before we do that, uh, let's just get a picture tube and fire it up and see what it looks like. Um, it, it says it says that the horizontal width is too narrow and has a fold over problem. So in theory it works. So there's no reason to waste time testing this because it's, it's working. So let's just fire it up and see what it's doing prior to any type of repair work we attempt. That way we have a before and an after, and we'll see what it takes to get this uh, up and going 100%. So let's grab a tube, hook it up, and see what we get. Well, I went and got the tube, and this is the chassis off of that tube. And it's also, 
1986 release, however it's slightly different. This is a much earlier version of the 86, 1986. And this one, you can see here that this 270 ohm resistor is much different, it's a much lower wattage than this one, so I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll see. Also, uh, we'll I'm gonna have to make sure it's 270. But you'll notice here on the bottom that it also has the diode on the back, which is a mod that Wells Gardner did. Don't ask me why, but a lot of them are like this. But it's also missing that capacitor I was talking about. So it's possible that I'm incorrect. I know for a fact that the, some of the 86 versions have that capacitor I'm talking about. But I think if a memory, memory serves me, that capacitor is only there if the image is too wide. Like if you remove that capacitor and hook this up and the image is like super wide, it can barely fit the image on the screen horizontally. It's just huge off the left and huge off the right. That cap is missing. So if you don't have that problem, the cap isn't needed. So it's possible with this being an, uh, an image that's too narrow. Um, that's why I want to test it. I want to test it on this tube to see if I have the same problem. If I don't, then it's a problem with this yoke, the, with, with the yoke or something like that. Uh, but C38 is the cap that controls the horizontal size. And this one has what looks like... Uh, I can't see it. Uh, it doesn't have the rating on it. Um, so... Hmm. See, here's the thing, is that this one has... The ones that have the mod here with the diode, they have a secondary capacitor here in, in place of where D18 usually goes. So right here is where D18 would normally be, and the reason they put this on the bottom side of the board is because they put this capacitor in here to help with the horizontal size. So this may be another alternate version of that cap on the back side that I was talking about. Most likely what that is. So I think we may end up having to put a cap like this on this chassis just to get that problem fixed. But first thing we're gonna do is make sure that this actually reads 270 ohms. I lost my pointer here. Okay. Well, and the frame ground is loose. I'm not sure why that is. Better. Okay. What do we read for this? Uh, 260, close enough. Hmm. Alright, well I guess we won't worry about it too much. Well, let's get it uh, powered up. See what we have. We may end up having to put that cap in there. Or on the bottom side. So I'll just leave the 18 on the back because that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, I knew that, but there's no harm in having it on the front. But I think what happened was that someone did some mods to this and they removed that extra cap that this one has. Not, not all of them have this. This is, that, this is the mod that you would do on the early 86 versions if you have issues with the width. You either add or remove a cap like that. So, I wish I had one uh, that actually has that mod on the bottom. Uh, hang on a second, let me see if I can find one. Well, look through this stash, and I don't have one. So. I'll probably have to make a dedicated video on that capacitor later, but if you have a K7000 with the capacitor across here, a big one that looks like, you know, looks like this, uh, do not remove it. That's a factory mod that needs to be there or your image will be super wide. Okay, so now we'll put this one aside that came on the tube. <clears throat> and let's get this one installed. Okay, we are hooked up and ready to go. We got anode neck yoke ground video, we got power, and we have our, we're gonna use our test pattern generator for this, so let's turn this on. And let's see what happens. One, two, three. Oh, it's always something. Forgot to plug in the power. Okay, main power. All right, here we go. All right, fires right up. A vertical hold. There we go, whoa, contrast. And our brightness needs to be roughly there. Uh, H position. 
Oh, it's vertical position over here, sorry. And let's see. Yeah, it squishes. See how it squishes on itself when it moves to the right? It doesn't fill all the way to the edge, and it squishes itself on both sides here. So if you move this to roughly there where it needs to be, it's squished over here. So we've got something going on with the width. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure that out. But, um, let's see, maybe what he's talking about. He's not, he doesn't mention vertical fold over. He just says, um, I just say vertical fold. Vertical fold. So the vertical fold over is most likely the 50, 60 hertz pot. Uh, let's get our screwdriver here and adjust that out. So if we look down here, yeah, if you look, see the top? And then look at the bottom, it's squished. So if we adjust our vertical size, uh, yeah, see how it folds over on itself on the bottom? So if we adjust to the top here, roughly there, and then adjust our 50, 60 hertz pot, just as I thought. There you go. So now we have full on the top and full on the bottom. So except for the... Th this looks much bigger on the... This looks too big in the middle. Something is not right. Because that is way too big in the middle. You can see how on the edge here, you got this is the size of the square and as you go out to the, the edges it gets uh, smaller and smaller. Something is not right. I'm going to play around with the uh, horizontal capacitors and see C38. I'm going to see if C38 and see if adding that other capacitor. I may just rob the one from here just for experimentation and slave in here to see if it makes a difference. But I'll get this figured out and I'll uh, come back and if I get it figured out, we'll show it in action and I'll show you what I did and this should be uh, good to go. The only thing left appears to be just the width problem. So stand by. Well, I'm ready to test this here. What I did was I actually took C38 and that one cap that was in front of it off of this other chassis over here. And this, in fact, is what I was thinking, is the reason that this diode is on the bottom side of the chassis is because there's supposed to be this capacitor in that spot. And the reason those legs are cut off is because someone cut this out at some point from this chassis. So I'm going to use these as a basis. And if we look here, this one's actually... Uh, let's see, 200 volt, 394. This one just says 200 volt, 0 0.015. So I don't really even know if this is even the right reading. So we're going to leave that out for now. What I'm going to do is go through my width caps here and find a compatible set. For instance, this is 394, and the the lower you go, the narrower the image gets. No, I take that back. Don't quote me. The lower you go, the wider it gets. The higher you go, the narrower it gets with the reading. And if you have the wrong one in there, it can definitely affect the squishing on the side. So, what we are going to do is try and find... See, here's that... These are the ones we need to put in there. This is a 1600 volt, and that's what this is. This is the one that should be on there. You can look... That's missing, I should say. Uh, 1.6 kilovolt, 582, 582, yeah. So we need to find a, a, a 1600 kilovolt one in here that we can put in that spot. And I've also got you know a bunch more in here. So let's just take these out of here and see if we can find one. Let's see, this is 582. We've got. A 622, that might be close enough. Here's a 622. You may just use this one. So I'll set that aside. And we'll zoom out here for the sake of, well, seeing everything. Uh, we got another 622. And another, well, they're all 622. So we'll put these back in here. Because um, normally this is C69. This 1600 kilovolt is C69 and it'll work in place of C36 as well for this instance where it needs that one on the bottom or the one here where the D18 is on the top this one here that came out of the other chassis that's what these are for and this is actually um, 
a C3038 because it's a 630 volt one. So we're looking, we found our extra cap for the position where D18 is, like this one here I pulled out of the other one that was missing from this one. So we found that one. Now we need to find a replacement C38 that's closer to this one, the 394. Uh, so if we go through here and dump these out, any of these will work, but I'm trying to find one closer. Here we go, right here. Perfect. You see how much smaller it is, but look at the rating. 394, 250 volt 394. 200 volt 394. So here's our C38. We'll put that in place of this one, um, this one here that came out of this chassis. And then we'll put this one in that was not there to begin with. So we'll put these in there. Hey, I got a message, all right. Um, so this one and this one were on the original chassis that we were, te we were testing with on the other one. Um, that I was using as an example, I should say. So we'll set those aside so I don't mess those up. This is our original C38 that we're going to put this one in place. And this is the replacement one that will go in front of it, in the place where the D18 is on the top. So, um, yeah, let's see what that does. Let me put all this away. And I'll bet you, we're successful. All right. Back here. Let's get this installed. We'll just bend our legs out like this. Pretty easy. Set this in place. I've already got the Holes desoldered from taking the cap out. And there we have it, just like that. We'll bend our feet over so it doesn't fall out. Well, in theory. There we go. All right. Let's get this one soldered in. Doesn't like that. Hmm. Well, let's just bend it over and do it this way then. There we go. Let's cut this off. And make sure that is good. So there's that one, and uh, normally I would install this one in there, but the legs are in the way, so I think what we'll do is we'll just install on the bottom side, like it would have been from the factory. Uh, in this case, uh, this leg will go here. We want to get this in this way, which would put this leg like this. So let's cut well uh, let's do it this way. I'm not sure why this jumper's here. It's kind of in the way. You know what? Let's just do it the right way. Let's just take this out of here. get these out. That one's falling through. There you go. There's that remnant of the component leg. The other one, um, got it. There it is. Okay, that's better. So let's put this in here like this. 
Okay, so this is how the other one over here was. That's how this one was that we were looking at earlier. So I'm betting that that's going to fix our problem. Oh, that trace is lifted. Of course, like every other trace on this thing. No wonder it's got so much work done to it. There we go. Okay. Let's make that nice and aesthetically positioned correctly. And since that's lifted, I'm going to put that over to here. There we go. Uh, this side's okay, so we'll just do it normally. Well, there we have it. Any bets? While we're here, let's do some reflow. I don't like that. I don't like these. Um, I ain't going out like that. I ain't going out like that. Whoever, whoever did the work on this did a pretty good job, I must say, because there's not a there's not a single speck of flux anywhere on this thing. It's a very good, very good job they did on this. However, everything looks very oxidized. Nothing is shiny. It looks all, you know, they cleaned it too well. If that's even a thing. Okay, I'll say that's good. Um, header pins didn't look too good. I did. I see that after I mentioned that everything looks good. All right, so we'll call that all right. Um, well, let's get it plugged in. See how much better that works. Okay, here we go. What will happen? It turned right on. There we go. No more squish sides. I need to adjust H position, which is way over here. That fixed it, just like I thought. You can see it's not squished on either side now. It's a bit too wide. So I'd like to fit the entire image on the screen so we can get a good idea. Let me put this on the pod of try. All right, that looks pretty damn good. And let's adjust our width here if I'm able to. Actually, you know, I'm going to turn this off because I don't want to be, I don't want to sing uh, any Johnny Cash or Nine Inch Nails today. I think down is wide and up, no, down is, down is shrink. Okay, that should be shrunk. Indeed. And there you have it. Success. Quick and easy repair. So you can see that now we have all the squares are equal. All the way out to the edge. Both sides. It's perfect. So somebody removed that ancillary auxiliary capacitor out of there in that D18 position that should have been there. And that, I think, was our problem.
It could have been also been the um, that C38 width cap. I don't know what the rating was. 0 0.15. I have no idea if that's 150. But if it was, I don't think that was correct. I think it might have been too wide. So if you actually put a cap in that's that's too low of rate, it will go so wide that the edges will fold over on themselves. So that could have been the problem too. C38 could have been too low of a reading, and that could have been a contributing factor as well as that missing capacitor. But as you can see now, it's perfect. Uh, let's adjust the vertical position to make this equal distance. Now well, it's as low as it gets. Let's do size. Oh wait, oh, there we go. That's why that was too. <laughs> that's why that was too big because it was stretched too tall. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. I'd say that's a, a good repair. Checkerboard, color bars, beautiful colors. Red, green, blue. Crosshairs. Yep. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next chassis in this uh, log of two or lot of two. We'll be right after this one, and we'll see how that one turns out. So, yep. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe if you want. And we'll see you very soon on the next one in this lot of two.